Okay, so I came into this book tag unsure of like what books I would talk about in this because I felt like after watching and Jerry at Onyx Pages, watching her do the book tag and the books that she brought out, and then after watching like the creator of this book tag, Helene at Books by Lenise, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Lanes or Le Lenise. After watching their video and seeing the books that they brought out, I was all like, oh my gosh, I don't think I got any. I haven't read any books that like can really correspond with the prompts or the questions in this tag. But I just, I did a little soul searching. I did a little bookshelf, well, bookshelf searching, yeah, you know book collection search and whatever girl I went through all that and I was just like let me see if anything kind of hits and I found a few books so I felt good about that either way I was tagged by Brie at the lock petition thank you Brie for tagging me I saw somebody else do this book tag I believe it was Maya with an eye I saw her video of it and I was I I said I was gonna watch it and I was like oh I'm going to do this tag and then Brie tagged me to do this and I was just like, okay, so I'm gonna do it. I am not sure, I'm gonna keep it a buck. You know, I'm not trying to say like, I'm popping like that, I'm so popular or whatever. But anyway, in case anybody might have like tagged me in their Black History Month tag videos or whatever, I appreciate you, but I am not, I was not aware. I'm still, there's so, there's so much content that I'm trying to catch up with. There are so many Black booktubers that like, I wanna watch their content, so. It ain't easy. First question of the Black History Month book tag, the inaugural one. What is a book everyone should be reading during Black History Month? Give one fiction and one nonfiction title. And for that, I was not sure, I really wasn't sure what people should read for Black History Month. I feel like, I mean, you got the right to read whatever you want to read, okay? As long as it's written by a Black person and it is centering Black people and Black and their black experiences like you have the right to read whatever you want whether it is super joyful or super depressing super horrifying super whatever but even more importantly it is a, in a way uplifting black people or just being very honest about it but not necessarily but not something that is trying to be disparaging to black people and not really kind of redeeming them or kind of showing them in a more nuanced aspect because i know we ain't all gonna be perfect as black people but at the end of the day give us some nuance so for this i couldn't pick one book i will say first thing that comes to mind because i'm currently in the middle of reading this the underground railroad by colson whitehead i honestly feel like this is a really good book to read for black history month although it is a fictionalization of black history it does talk about a lot of historical facts and a lot of historical things that happened with black people there's just so much to slavery that i didn't know about like there's stuff that you know about like you might have watched roots you know the roots miniseries when he was growing up or something or read the book roots by alex haley or you might have like i don't know you might have seen something 12 years of slave or something django unchained you might have seen something about slavery because i mean we have so many movies about slavery so much. Although it is about slavery, it is about working towards freedom from slavery, from oppression, from bondage, and just the challenges of working through that. It shows you the, the resilience of Black people. It shows you the challenges that Black people are going through just to get freedom and how a lot of what happened during slavery is being mirrored now. It's basically the same story, but a different cast, a different setting, different costuming, different all that stuff. Still a lot of similarities going on. I do understand if you want to read a lot more joy during your black history month this might not fully be that but i will say like it is something worth reading for black history month i would also suggest all boys aren't blue by george m johnson as a really great book to read for black history month giving a black queer perspective and also i'm still lobbying for black future month i really am still lobbying for that we deserve that we need more of a black future to look forward to and not just think about the history of blackness like that is important the history of blackness but we do need the future of blackness so a lot of sci-fi like oh yes talking about the future i do think an unkindness of ghosts is, a re is another really good book that would be a great read for black history month it does kind of reinterpret like the history of slavery in america into this futuristic sci-fi up in space story and it includes a lot of queer characters a lot of different disabilities to different uh newer divergences 
the word divergence is. Like, it's all these different things wrapped up into this one book. Also, Kindred, I just finished reading that for Black History Month and this is a fantastic read. I loved it. And I do think this is something that would definitely be a good read for Black History Month. Also, another really good nonfiction title for a book you should read during Black History Month is No Ashes in the Fire by Darnell L. Moore. I think this is an amazing title to read for Black History Month. It does talk about, although it is his story, his story traverses through the history of like kind of like a history not fully but like a post-slavery history of his family and appreciating where they've come from to make him who he is now and just the love that he's had also <laughs> b-boy blues by james earl hardy i think this is an amazing book also for black history month i do think it would be yeah this is a book that people should read for black history month it, it is something that gives you a little bit more lighter fare compared to all the other books that I'm talking about here too because what like three of them tackle slavery in one way or another but it's all slavery and black people are being oppressed but fighting for or pushing forward to freedom and getting out of oppression but this here it is a love story a romance well would it be a romance i don't know it says love black on black love story out here i don't know if we can classify it as romance or just a love story but i think it ends with like a happy ending it pretty much did end with a happy ending so can be considered a romance but it says love story here so we'll just go with love story but either way this is a really beautiful read it is romantic it is loving it is following a relationship between two black gay men and finding love with each other and build and starting something beautiful black history is not just about slavery it is not just about that it's more of a testament to how great we are as black as people and how much ingenuity and how much resilience we're that strong we're that amazing all of these i do think would be great reads for black history month number two which black booktuber would you recommend watching and why? This question, I initially when I read it, I was like, ooh, I don't know. I don't like this question because I don't like having to like go through all the black booktubers because it reminds me of like the booktube newbie tag where they ask you, what would you like to ask your favorite booktuber? And I feel like that's that question kind of circumvents. Who's your favorite booktuber? Tell us. <laughs> but I think for this one, I would recommend Onyx Pages and Jerry at Onyx Pages. I'm not getting to watch her channel enough, but she has introduced me to so many books, so much speculative fiction, so much sci-fi, so many black sci-fi authors, so many black authors that are writing fantasy, so many Caribbean authors writing fantasy and sci-fi, and I appreciate her for that so much. I have met her already in per like in person, in real life, and that's like family. She's like family to me now, and we both Trini, like, we both, of we're both of Trinidadian heritage. That's fam, like, she's family to me, like, already, like, for real. Like, we're really cousins as far as I'm concerned. We are, and like, I believe it, I feel it, it's real out here. I love her personality, I love that she's just so, I don't know, there's just like a warmth to her, but also she's still going to like correct a situation like, this isn't okay, this isn't right, this isn't, you know, this is what ac actually should be, what is what, and that's it, you know, period. But she does it in such a beautiful way, in such a kind, and but very clear and concise and stern way. Like, this is what's real, and we're not going to be doing that okay thanks bye and i appreciate that so much that's boundaries right there she's setting up boundaries she's making sure stuff is clear no games played it is what it is you know what i'm saying but i love and jerry and i appreciate her i will also like to say i do love jonathan at to be black and loved i do think that he is somebody that is like worth watching because i love the way he does like his reviews and how he talks about books he talks about it with like a, i feel like a tenderness to talking about a book it's so beautiful like he'll just he, he really talks about like how beautiful the writing is and how careful stuff is being handled in a book and but he talks about it in such a careful and tender and 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 beautiful way that I appreciate so much so shout out to Jonathan people really should watch him and watch his content give him your time like he's like he's amazing 
Number three, what is your favorite book written by an author from an African country? And that, this is a question that really, really took me out because I was just like, when I like saw people like talking, cause I'm like, I don't think I've read anything by a black author as yet, by a black author from an African country yet. I have not yet. I do have books by them cause I do have Rosewater by Tade Thompson. And I also have Pet, and Fresh Water by Akweke Emezi that I am looking forward to reading. I've heard great things about them. I've also read, okay, I can't say, cause I don't think, I read Beast Made of Night by Toshi Onyabuchi, but I do not know if Toshi is actually, if he is mainland Nigerian, but I do know that he's Nigerian or of Nigerian heritage. I would need to find more black authors from African countries to read more than Chinua Achibe and Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I, cause I know there are more. There is Uzo Dinma Awiale, Awiala. There's also Yaagasi. But I'll definitely be reading books by Black African authors from African countries. Number four, what is your favorite Black classic? And for this one, this was another one that really took me out too. That was just like, oh my gosh, I don't think I have any really good Black classics. And then I had to like dig deep and be like, yes, I do. I do. And that is The Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier. And in thinking about this, the reason why I kind of probably didn't think like, oh, The Coldest Winter Ever would be like a considered a classic is because it's like, it was published in like 99. It also kind of spawned like the renaissance and the rebirth, I guess, of street lit street literature because that technically street lit has kind of really had a prominence more in the 70s with like Donald Goins and Iceberg Slim. This really kind of brought a renaissance from my understanding, this, and then also True to the Game was another, and I think like a little after that, Be More Careful. Those are like, three top tier three books that like you read like street lit top tier books but definitely this is a classic it made me think about like how we kind of define like black classics i feel like black classics are defined by whether it's kind of mainstreams to white audiences like it's gotten to this mainstream level that like white people appreciate it and they care about it and they like it so much and they're like oh this is like a black classic because white people said so. And it's like, yes, it's great that black and white people love this book, but it's also like, those aren't the only classics. There are classics that I'm sure that a lot of white people don't know and just a lot of non-black people don't know that black people appreciate so much and we love these books so much that white people just don't acknowledge they because they don't know it or they just didn't like it because they couldn't relate. So definitely The Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier is another classic and I will also say that B-Boy Blues by James Earl Hardy is another classic. These two are like, definitely, you know, I'm gonna always hawk them because they're like my favorites, they're my classic favorites. Also, I would say, although this is not one of my favorites, this will definitely be considered another classic. I do think Waiting to Exhale is another black classic as well. I do, I'm sure it's not seen as a classic because it's like they made a movie out of it and it's just probably like a commercially successful book but Waiting Tex Hale and and How Stella Got Her Groove Back those I think are also classics as well and In Invisible Life by Elon Harris is another classic another black classic yeah I do think we have a lot of black classics I know Toni Morrison amazing James Baldwin amazing classics down the line yes truly Yes, but also like, we also have other classics that I think are very acknowledged by black people. And that's important. That is more, that is very important. Like there are our black classics and we gonna stay appreciating them, okay? Number five, which movie slash book to movie adaptation slash documentary would you recommend watching during Black History Month? For this, I do think a really good documentary to watch that I haven't watched yet, but I will watch soon enough is The Black Godfather. I haven't watched it yet, but I've heard so many great things about it and I'm looking forward to watching it. I just haven't sat down and taken the time to really watch it yet and I'm going to give it some time. I also suggest Beyonce's Homecoming because that was an experience. Like I saw it on YouTube the night that she did it for Coachella. So I'm like, yes, that's important. There's important viewing. It is a good time. It is blackness, period. Black people just really having a good time. It's probably celebrating black culture on so many levels. And the music is amazing. And just all this, the, mm, the richness of like just, 
horns and the drums and the energy and the just the pure unadulterated blackness played out on homecoming so definitely i would suggest as documentaries to watch for black history month although those are both like netflix things but it's like yes a movie to watch i would definitely say players club because players club is a, is a black classic it is a black classic also waiting to exhale another black classic how stella got her groove back really good classics all the time we have to watch waiting to exhale and how Stella got her groove back because those came out when I was young and I've never gotten a chance to actually see them because that was grown folks movies to watch and you can watch those. I think that was a really good one. I would say Soul Plane, but also Soul, Soul Plane is kind of problematic because, ooh girl, she's kind of problematic but it's a very funny movie, but it does play into stereotypes a little bit though. But it's a good movie, it's a classic at this point because it's a ridiculously bad, it's like a ridiculously it's a classic. Also, Friday is another really good classic to watch for Black History Month. A lot of people have said Moonlight, and I say yes, Moonlight, period. That's it. I even want to say Noah's Ark jumping the boom, but I also feel like it is a good standalone movie, but I also feel like you need to watch the first, the, like, the two seasons of Noah's Ark before you actually watch Noah's Ark jumping the boom. And then there's also, like, the 2020 um like special movie thing that patrick ian pope the creator of noah's ark did like last year's like a quarantine noah's ark quarantine special thing so like that's really good to watch after it but definitely noah's ark jumping the broom that's a really good movie to watch for black history month and jackie's back jackie's back black classic ultra black classic that falls into the category of like white people probably don't even know what jackie's back is that's a black classic and so is jennifer lewis she is a classic period and also there needs to be like a a, a group watch or something of jackie's back on jackie washington day because <laughs> it's important that's black culture right there you know what i'm saying that's black culture that's important you know what i'm saying those are definitely really great movies to watch for black history month yeah and i managed to slip in some um some books to movie adaptations in there. I also think Soul Food is another one, good one too. And Love and Basketball. How about that? Like, look at me. I know. I, I really need to watch these movies though. Some of these movies I haven't seen in a long time. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's been a long time. I really need to watch Players Club though because that was another grown ass movie that I could not watch much of when I was young. Cause you know, I sneak a little bit of it, you know, but I, those were movies that I really needed to watch, that I wasn't able to watch when I was younger. And now I'm grown, I can watch them. Number six, what's on your TBR for Black History Month? Okay, so for my TBR for Black History Month, which I kind of wasn't really good at, I had all of these books on my TBR for Black History Month. I was kind of slow to the reading. Although I started reading Kindred a few days before February, I didn't finish it till probably like three weeks in because I was just like not reading like I should and I'm gonna get bit at it. I enjoyed this a lot. This was really a fantastic read. I was enthralled. I was like invested. And I think probably like after watching the Black Book Summit SFF, panel and I think Brit yeah Brittany and Melanin Eclectic she mentioned that the mood for this book was just like really intense so it's like for me I think it might have taken me as long as it did to read this book as short as it is is because it is kind of an intense book and you get really invested into it I feel like I was very invested I barely knew what to say after I read this but I I enjoyed it a lot like I could barely tab it because I was just like I don't know what to tab I feel like there's so much to tap, but I don't know what to tap because I am just too, like, invested to, like, just be like, I need to take some time to stop and tap something. Like, I'm gonna have to read it again and really, really take the time to tab it apart. And then after that, I started reading The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, and I'm enjoying this a lot. I haven't done much tabbing because I'm enthralled with this one as well. But also, I don't know what to tap because I feel like there's so much, and this... As intense as this is, I also have to reread it to really tab it apart if I really want to, like, dig in and discuss, but fantastic. I'm actually thinking I'm becoming a Colson Whitehead stan. I'm really, well, I'm gonna say stan, fan. And also, I ain't gonna lie though. I sneaked the back picture and I seen Colson and I was just like, 
Colson can get her, honey. He could get the drawers. What's up? You know what I'm saying? He could get her. Anyway, I'm also planning on reading Binti, the complete trilogy by Nnedi Okorafor. I really wanted to like read this for Black History Month, but I will read this for March instead since it is International Women's yeah, International Women's Month or International Women's History Month. Not exactly sure. Although I should probably read this in June for because I am still lobbying for Black Future Month. And this would be a great book to read for Black Future Month. The future of blackness. You know. But this is on my TBR. Also, Dead Magic Book One, The Black Veins by Isha Monet. I wanted to read this as well, but that ain't happening, but it's on, the, it's on the TBR, so I'm thinking I will read this also for March. And I will definitely need to read this because after reading all of this, like, really deep, heavy stuff, I need to read something a little bit lighter, a little bit more jovial. I also plan on reading Freshwater by Akweke Emezi. I will also read this in March. And I also plan on rereading Beast Made of Night by Tochi Onyobuchi and following that up with Crown of Thunder. Being that I haven't read this for Black Issue Month, I'm thinking maybe I could read this in the future, read this in June maybe, or maybe read it in April. At number seven, which new releases by Black writers are you looking forward to the most this year? For a second, I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm looking forward to. I do know that I'm looking forward to Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Aide, and also which is Deep in Gold by Sianon Smart. Like, I'm looking forward to, I knew I was looking forward to do two books for sure. I'm also looking forward to The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. Shout out to him. I am also looking forward to Sorrow Lamb by River Solomon. Although I have not read The Deep by River Solomon yet, I do love An Unkindness of Ghosts, so I'm looking forward to reading Sorrow Land. And I think I've heard the premise and that sounds amazing. And also I'm looking forward to Son of the Storm by Suyi Davies Okungboa. Although I have not read his first book, David Mogo, God Hunter, I'm looking forward to that. I've heard a lot of great things about David Mogo. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I'm hoping I could read that this year. Maybe I'll read it in June because June is going to be like a pride month, but it's also going to be like we lobbying for um, for Black Future Month, period. Period, okay? Period. We Done deal. And also Life After Death by Sister Soldier because I have to read the follow-up to The Coldest One Ever, which is... I, I ain't gonna lie, I've heard a few mixed reviews so far from, like, I've heard the announcement and then after the announcement I heard, I don't know about this book. I don't, it don't sound like it's gonna be amazing. I feel like I kind of know to expect that at this point because the books that came after The Coldest Winter Ever that are companions to The Coldest Winter Ever, people have not liked them because I think Sister Soldiers kind of put a little bit more, I'd say more effort into into her writing these books. The Coldest Winter Ever feels a little, more, a little bit more, just like it just flowed as a book. And I think with the other book, she did a lot more research and a lot more, she just put so much more effort into it that I think for these subsequent books that came after, they just are just way more literary and I guess a little bit more deeper than people needed. I think that might be the same issue with Life After Death. I didn't mind the companion books. I'm still looking forward to Life After Death. I'm sure this, I'm hoping the story is gonna be really good. And I am not sure who to tag for this video. I definitely feel the need to tag Jonathan at To Be Black In Love and Timothy Dwight at Dwight Pages to like do this Black History Month tag. I don't know if, well, yeah, they could probably still do it like, you know, post Black History Month because I am doing this like, post like last day of black history month and anybody else out there who hasn't done it go ahead and do the black history month book tag and i believe anybody could do it you don't gotta be black to do it you just gotta be reading black books by black authors centering black people black identities and black experiences thank you for spending your time with me and i am out this bitch like fleek the fuck what's up you know what i'm saying and shout out to peaches for fleek she deserves Thank you, Peaches. Shout out to Peaches.